So guys, today we are going to be doing a video on teaching you guys how to use specific things inside of OBS. I did a video not long ago asking if you guys wanted to see this, and I did get a like on that video. Like I said, if you guys wanted to see another video about ending like this, go ahead and hit the like button, and I got that. So I'm actually going to be showing you how to do everything. Now, me personally, I'm literally starting everything from brand new, so I'm going to click delete. Now, the reason why I'm going to be doing this all is because I want to literally show there needs to be at least one scene. Okay, well, there's that one. I'm going to create a new scene just called Scene 2 and delete this one. So, I'm going to literally start everything from new as if you guys were starting out from brand new OBS. Literally having nothing set up, no screen capture, no nothing ready. All you would have is something called Scene 1 under Scene and Source, you would have nothing right there. So, um, what we're going to do now is if you have scene one you're pretty much on the way to where you need to be if you want to add more than one scene which is like i had then i'll show you how to do that in a little bit but under source you want to click on the little plus button and you will get this little tab now first i'm going to show you how to set up all your screen recording stuff and then literally the screen recording stuff also ties into the streaming so we'll also go over that if you want to record a specific game or whatever on a specific window or on a specific anything you want to click game capture and then click OK. Now if I was to have a game open it would actually show it and everything but you want to click on where it says capture any full screen applications click on that drop this thing down and click on capture specific window that means you can choose specifically what it wants to record now I have no games open and I don't even have these three things right or these two things right here open but it's asking me to record it but if I click like audacity and click OK it should show up um, transform and stretch to screen okay let's open that up and then minimize it oh okay so it's not opening it up as a game capture because it's actually not a game for some reason but that's how you would basically open up a game you would double click on it if you want to change it to anything else me i'm actually going to do full screen applications or whatever and i would just leave it as that but if you guys want to record just your desktop you would go ahead and click the plus button then display capture and then name it to whatever you want so desktop is what i'll be naming it click ok if you have more than one screen which i do but i have unplugged right now so my capture card can know what screen to record you would drop this down and click whichever screen you want to record and then you would just click OK. Now, if you want to switch screens in between each recording or whatever, or in the middle of your recording, you just double click on it and then you can click down on the little um, drop down button and you can change it to whatever you want, even in the middle of recording or streaming. Now, you guys can see mine looks a little weird right up here. So, what you want to do is on your desktop, your screen recording, or whatever, if you ever want anything to fit to the specific size of what it's supposed to be recording at, which is usually 1080p or 1280 by 720, or something like that. You would right click on whichever ones like if I wanted to do on there on desktop or um, game capture I would right click on it and go to the same thing right now you want to click on your desktop or your screen recording or whatever it is you want to right click go to transform oops my bad go to transform go over and of course you can specifically edit it if you want to but this is a lot easier to go to transform and stretch to screen so it stretches it specifically to the screen size that it should be recording for your specific monitor um, if you don't have a like a HD monitor and stuff like that where it's like um, 1280 by 720, it will automatically put it as like 800 by 600 if you have a square screen or whatever, like whatever it is. Just go in your settings here in a bit like I'll show you and you can change that to automatically record everything into the 1280 by 720. Even if you don't even have that kind of a monitor, it will record it into that way. So that right there is how you actually go ahead and open up your um, video to record your screen. Now let's say if you have a face cam like I do, I have a webcam and everything. Um, now I'm gonna end up turning on a webcam, but I would just let you guys know I don't have a shirt on, so excuse that. Um, so I'm gonna click plus, and then you wanna go ahead and where is it at? Where is it at? Video capture device. Now you have to make sure you have your camera plugged in, like your webcam. Um, mine's a Logitech um, 720 or 270 or whatever the fuck it's called, I don't remember. Um, but you wanna make sure you have create new, and then this one would be webcam. And you can, if you have already something set up in here that has your webcam in use, you want to go ahead and click on um, Add Existing and click on the existing webcam that's already being in use on another web, on another part. But me, since we're starting from new and we have nothing, you want to make sure to click Create New. Make source visible. Yeah, you of course you want to make the source visible, or else you wouldn't be able to see it down here. Click OK, and then it would pop up there. There we go. I have no shirt on. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, um, Logitech, uh, oh yeah, it's a Logitech HD webcam C270. That's the webcam I, ha webcam I have. 
I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to size it down. Now I'm really sweaty also, so sorry about that. Um, my lights are on and everything. Um, so if you want to crop your webcam, I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. You want to go ahead and actually, if I believe it's this way, no, but is it Shift? No, it's Alt. Okay. So the faster way to do is if you've ever seen any other videos, usually they'll tell you to right click and go to free transform and then um, they'll tell you to do like edit transform or something like that and you can literally just crop it literally every inch by inch by inch by inch. And my webcam is actually a little low. Let's go ahead and turn that upward a little bit. Um, so the easiest way to do it is make sure you're clicked on your webcam and then you want to hold um, alt on the left side of your keyboard, hold alt and then just drag from the moving points and that will crop your webcam. So that right there would be about good for a game. And then let go of Alt to go ahead and just like zoom it out. And of course, Alt again to be able to do whatever you want. That's how that actually kind of works. We're going to move this up just a little bit because I want to mainly get this color green screen, not the one below it, because I do have two separate colors of green screen. Now to green screen something like this, um, I've done a video about this like a long time ago, but I'm going to go ahead and show it now. Um, to green screen, a green screen of course, if you have a green screen in your video, um, what you want to do is of course make sure there's no harsh light on your face like it is mine right now because my lights are just sitting here specifically just for the video. Um, they're not actually set up the proper way. Um, you want to go ahead and right click on your webcam, make sure there's already a green screen behind you or a blue screen or one full solid collar and make sure if you're wearing a specific collar, that background cannot be that collar. So if the census is green, I cannot wear a green shirt. Make sure you guys do that. Then you want to come up to filters or wherever it's at, where is it? Yeah, filters. And then you want to click on um, effect filters. You want to click on the plus. And then you want to find chroma key. And then just click OK. And it should automatically do it for you usually. If it doesn't do a good job, then you go ahead and tweak it the settings. I usually keep it as what it is because I am about three feet away from my green screen and my lights aren't too close to it and everything, not too far from it, so it doesn't cast a shadow. So OBS actually does a really good job at green screen for me. After that, just click close and it will keep the settings for you just like that. So there we go. Now we have a green screen webcam. Um, audio is a little bit different depending on what you're going with me. Everything started from new. If I turn up my mic, there we go. Everything would be recording that way. Um, so that's also just your mic and everything. If you have a microphone or anything plugged in, like if you plug in a webcam before you plug in a microphone, it will use the webcam's microphone if it has a microphone. If you want to change that, just click on settings and then go to advanced audio properties, I believe it is. No, settings and properties. Okay, yeah, so the settings and properties right now, it's actually linked to my Blue Yeti microphone. And if, of course, if I drop this down, there will be default, which would be nothing because there's no other audio input. And then the HD webcam, the C2, the C270, which is my webcam. I'm going to click keep it on the Blue Yeti. And then I'm just going to click OK. If you haven't had it already, go ahead and click and choose whichever microphone you want to use. This one is going to be helpful for streaming. Now, if you're into editing a lot, you can go ahead and record your audio separate and line that stuff up yourself. But mainly the reason why I do this right now is mainly for streaming because I use the audio from OBS to stream. I don't ever do this for recording usually. So, uh, but keep in mind, you guys can use this for recording once you select your microphone. But make sure that's selected, click OK. And then when you click record on OBS, it will actually record your voice through your selected microphone and it will automatically line up the video for you. But me, I keep the audio turned all the way down when I'm recording. And then when I'm streaming, I keep it all the way up because I use the inbuilt audio from uh, um, OBS connected to my microphone to be able to stream. Now desktop audio, of course, it's the exact same thing. If you have a game open in the background or you're watching a video or doing whatever, reacting to a video, playing a game, making a video, if there's sound that you were listening to in headphones, this has to be up. Because if not, OBS will not record the in sound or in game sound from the games, from the videos you're watching, from anything you are watching. It will not record it. So that I've made that mistake a lot. I've had that turned all the way down and done like a two hour long video. And the same thing with my microphone. That's the reason why I record everything separate. Usually I actually have both of them turned up. Sometimes like the audio from my microphone in OBS and in um, uh, my microphone and Audacity and stuff like that. And I usually have them as split layers, which I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to get too advanced. 
uh, so that way if one crashes if one audio form crashes I'll usually have another but I've literally recorded three and four and five hour long videos and had everything crash on me and lose audio and everything but um, I'm also going to actually turn off my face cam because I don't need that now so go ahead and actually delete that since I've already showed you guys how to do that um, mic audio and desktop audio you guys have already heard about that one and then there's nothing else in here if you guys have more than one microphone plugged into your computer also just letting you guys know you guys can add I don't know how to add but there is a way you guys can add another audio source I don't do it because I only have one microphone so I really don't know how to do it but I've accidentally done it one time and I don't remember how now moving on to the settings of OBS Now this could be a little tricky because it all just depends on how your OBS is set up how your computer is built and everything usually when you first open up Windows and you first opened up OBS and everything and it's your first time ever running OBS OBS will like control itself it will do what it needs to be done it will make itself run the best for your computer so that's how you mainly do that and not always is it right though that's a big problem for general I usually keep it on English if you have it if you speak a different language for one I don't know why you'd be watching this video because I don't speak multiple languages but if you do go ahead and click on language and click on whatever language you are but I'm English so I'm keeping it there dark and light and they have different modes like this which actually looks really cool holy crap I actually might keep it that way uh, actually I'm gonna go back to dark because I'm more familiar with it that way um, automatic check for updates I keep that and everything like most of this you guys can see right here just keep it the way it is I literally have not changed any of these I leave everything the way it is now for me I'm going to actually show you the recording stuff first and then we're going to be showing you the streaming setup so output this is for like when you're recording how everything gets put out to your desktop me I'm in high quality medium file sizes I do like you know pretty good file sizes I make sure everything looks good and everything and then mp4 that I have mine exported as so it's an mp4 file most editors actually every editor as far as I know can use mp4 it's faster to upload to YouTube and everything so if I'm going to be exporting an mp4 I want to be um, if I'm going to be exporting a video edit from an editor mp4 I want to make sure I'm recording everything out into an mp4 so it's all the same file size so I do not lose any um, quality in my videos and then encoder usually there says um, it says low CP usage preset that's just going from what I already have in my computer like my CPU and everything if you have a graphics card and everything else like that um, certain programs like OBS will actually notice that you have a graphics card and it will give you the specific um, encoder that actually runs with your graphics card so everything will run a lot smoother if you see any other setup other than this one your best bet is just to deal with that um, mess with around with it and everything and see which one works the best for you um, recording path is of course you know where you actually want to record everything mine literally just goes to my desktop because I don't record much I've been streaming a lot but every time I do record I instantly start editing after I'm done recording so I don't have no folders on my file or no files or anything on my desktop because right after I'm done editing them they get deleted so that's the reason why I only goes to my desktop and everything is recorded into one video clip instead of multiple so I don't have my desktop full of video clips right now I do but because I have been editing a lot of different things Audio bit rate, I keep mine at like 160. I literally just left all this there. Video bit rate is 25 or 2500. That, as far as I know, is that well, of course, that's for streaming, but that is basically saying how much your how much um, work your computer basically has to do whenever the video is getting transferred from OBS, from recording everything off your computer and sending it to a stream and everything. And then output mode is simple. I have mine as simple because if you click on advanced, you got a shitload of more things you can mess with. And I am not dealing with that, so I literally just go simple, which I don't know how to change that now. Okay. Um. Anyways, audio, audio. I have set as forty four point one um khz. Is that kilohertz? I have no clue. I literally never mess with anything other than the default default for the desktop audio, and then the microphone audio um auxiliary audio device. Instead of going to number two, I just kept it to number one. And actually, now that I see this, this is actually how you set up more than one microphone. If you click here, you can click on different web or audios and stuff like that. But right now, on number one, I have my Blue Yeti selected, so it would show up down here. And then everything else on here, I leave unchecked. And then everything's good to go. My video down here, now this is the resolution, the base canvas resolution and the output resolution. Now I'll explain to you what both of these do. The base canvas resolution is of course what it's going to be recording it at, what it is trying to see it at. And technically, 
I should be at like um, 1920 by 1080 because actually that's what I record at or that's what my um, screen um, size is and everything. That's technically what it should be at, but I'm at tw um, 1280 by 720. And the output scaled resolution is, of course, what it pushes the video out to be in a video or whatever. So if you record and your screen is this size, but you have it drop down to like all the way down here, this is the resolution that your video will be scaled up to, which would not be good. You wanna make sure you have it at the right one where I'm at, 1280 by 720. What, what are you doing, what are you doing? Go back. Okay, and this one, um, I literally have never done nothing with this, so I'm leaving it at the same common value FPS, or common FPS value, that's just, I'm assuming what it's saying, the common FPS your computer will be hitting when it comes to doing anything, if it goes, it, pretty sure this actually allows it to not go any higher than 30 FPS, mm, but it can go lower. I should probably have mine set up higher, but I'm keeping mine at 30 because I don't want my thing trying to overkill itself and everything and then me crash during a live stream or something like that. So I keep it at something kind of simple like that. Now hotkeys on the other hand, I still have my hotkeys which um, aren't really useful anymore because I deleted everything. But I'm not really going to show you guys how to do hotkeys because it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, the reason why I'm mainly just showing you guys different settings is literally because these things are so confusing and you could not know what certain things mean. But hotkeys are literally the easiest thing you can figure out how to do when it comes to anything. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys for you guys to figure out. It's literally the easiest thing. I figured it out by myself and I know you guys can too. Now advance over here. This is where it gets a little confusing. And if you want me to be completely honest, I'm going to be blunt with you. Leave this shit alone. I have not messed with nothing down here like the render stuff and like that. I'm not messing with any of this because no my look, I would mess with something and my entire program would like die. Now, what I'm going to do is because I don't want to change any settings, I'm going to click cancel because I already have my settings set the way I want them to. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and change. I'm going to keep it that way actually right now. Now, if you guys want to know what studio mode is, of course, it's set like this. Mainly what it is is like, you know, you can see two separate things. You can see like, uh, okay, how do I explain this? Like, it's hard to explain. One of these will show you what you're seeing to be able to like make sure that everything looks good then over here is basically seeing what other people would see you can also um, compare them to two separate things <gasps> oh I, I had a hiccup but yeah it is very confusing i do not mess with studio mode i just keep it in single mode controls is of course you know everything over here exit is of course exit um start or start recording now of course if you have your output mode set up and everything you have everything ready to go you have your audio turned up and everything or just recording audio separately click start recording and it will start recording and it will go to wherever you have your output folder selected to start streaming of course it would start streaming now i'm going to show you guys how to set up live streaming now of course i've already showed you how to ever set everything else up here on the sources and the scenes set those all up Real quick, pause the video, set those up real quick, and make sure you have all of those set up. Are you done? Good. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to go over to Google. I'm actually on YouTube right now. So now what you want to do is instead of going to your channel, you want to go to YouTube beta. Now, of course, it's going to take me a second to load this real quick. Let's go ahead and close these two out. Now what you want to go ahead and do is you want to come down here to Creator Studio Classic. That's what I do personally. Um, now here is, of course, my whole little setup thing right here. I'm going to close that out of here real quick. Now you want to go over to live streaming. Now this is where things get a little bit complicated. Not really, kind of. I don't know how to explain it. Here's the live streaming setup. Now me since I'm only running one monitor, I can't show you how I have my stuff set up for dual monitors. That will have to be just a camera view. I would have to like set up my camera and everything and show you both of my screens. But this right here, of course, change thumbnail. If you click that, you'll get your folders and everything. I'll have a whole bunch of thumbnails and pictures and things that you've used and all your thumbnails and everything. You just click on one and it will upload it to that specific thumbnail. And that's what everybody would see before clicking on your live stream. This right here is your title. Name it to whatever you want. I suggest you guys to always name your live streams. Don't just leave it as the default. Because honestly, if you name it once and then you go to live stream again with something completely different, for one, you'll still have the same um, thumbnail if you don't change that. And you'll still have the same title if you don't change that. And it will actually allow you to do that. Use the same exact title. So your best bet is to always name your title to make it more about specifically what you're doing in your video. Make sure you name your titles. Here is, of course, your description. I literally have nothing in there. I have not messed with the description. I leave that alone because I don't have many viewers. Uh, if I were you, I would take out the time of your day, set all this up and everything, get that all completed and everything. Make sure you get that done. 
some um, schedule next stream. I don't do that because I'm never on time, ever. I'm never gonna schedule a stream because I'm never on time. Gaming and everything, this is your categories. If you're doing a let's play on a game, make sure it is selected to game. And mine right now says GTA San Andreas in there because that's what I was streaming last, is GTA San Andreas. Now, of course, you have a whole bunch of other things you can do. There's nonprofit, um, nonprofit activisms, um, science and technology, education, how-to styles, news and politics, entertainment, comedy, people and blogs, gaming, TV, or travel and events, sports, pet, pets and animals, music, autos and vehicles, and vehicles and anim or films and animation. Jeez, I'm all over the place. Um, basically, so you have a huge variety of things you can select here. So if you can't find what you're doing on your video in here, then there's something really bad going on because you literally have so many choices here. Public and private, of course, all that stuff. This really is just common sense. Now here's where it gets kind of fun. You want to go back into OBS and you want to click settings. Go to stream and then you need to find out what you're wanting to stream on. If you were wanting to go to YouTube, you want to make sure it says streaming services up here and streaming type. Drop down this bar and you will have all these things. Now, of course, you can go to custom streaming services. There's a lot more, but just stay at streaming services. Um, go down and you'll have Twitch, YouTube, Smart, or Smash Cast, and all these other places, Facebook Live, um, and these other places I really don't know. I stick with YouTube, and then server, primary, YouTube, and guest server. Yeah, that, that's kind of it. Now your um, stream key, that's very important. I'm not showing you mine because I don't need to because you know that's literally linked to my own thing. But if you come here, you it says your streaming URL and then your streaming key. Um, if you're set up the way I am right now with the streaming services, YouTube and YouTube gaming, this unchecked, this to whatever I have here, then you would only have the stream key. Um, so what you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to click reveal. Now I'm not clicking reveal because I don't want you guys to see my stream key, but you want to go ahead and highlight it all. And after you highlight it, copy it, come back in here and paste it into here. And then click apply. And then you were literally done. If you already have your settings and everything done. So if you want to do that, you want to come here, you want to name your stream, put your description in here, change it to what it actually is, put the game title in here, change the thumbnail and everything, and then come back over here and click start streaming. Once you start streaming, give it about 10 seconds, go back over to YouTube, you will see this up here where it says offline, we'll say streaming or streaming now or whatever, then up here it will say um, health stream or stream health or whatever, it'll tell you if it's in the green, that means it's good, if it's in the red, that means it has very low latency, it means it's not for getting very much information to the live stream from you actual computer and everything that means you need to go back and do some more changes on your settings whoa that was a lot to talk about so that is mainly how you stream and record with OBS my settings the things you guys can do and then me basically trying to teach you how to set up everything from beginning all the way to scratch so hope this helped you guys out if it did make sure to please hit the like button because this really helped me and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video peace